Grounded Update 9.1 just went live yesterday, and if you're interested in knowing what came out with that patch, well, the patch notes are linked down in the description. There's not really a lot to talk about other than the fact that the stuffed creatures have returned. You can craft them once more at your workbench, and the known recipes list has returned to the smoothie maker. So all that is wonderful and great, but if you're interested in knowing more wonderful, great things about Grounded, well, I got 10 new tips and tricks that might help you out. What up? It's Tiny Pirate Gaming, and in this video, I'll be going over 10 tips and tricks, new tips and tricks that you can take advantage of in Grounded Update 9.1. Some of these tips and tricks might not work in the future, but right now, you can use them to help you out. A lot of them are based on saving you time in Grounded, so that you can speed up your gameplay a little bit. But let's go ahead and let's get into these. Remember, if you're enjoying the video and if you enjoy the content, do me a huge favor, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and don't forget to ring that little bell so you can become part of the hashtag Tiny Crew. Number 10. So you know that shovel animation, that shovel animation where after you hit the clay you do that really slow upward swing? Well now, in Grounded 9.0, since you can cancel your attack animation using the block, as soon as your shovel strikes the clay, block, and it will stop the animation and you can strike it again. It speeds up the gathering of clay, primarily, but it can also be used underwater if you want to speed up your underwater harvesting with the shovel. It's just a great little tip and trick that I figured out while I was playing some Grounded I said, why am I waiting for this full shovel animation? Also, just another tip and trick here. I've mentioned this before. If you're gathering clay, make sure you have the rock cracker on and make sure you have the coupe de grasse on, which will give you a chance to crack that clay with just one hit. Number nine. For those of you who didn't know, I live stream grounded over on Twitch. So maybe smash my follow button over there if you ever want to come hang out live and ask me questions or tell me that my tips and tricks videos stink. But this tip and trick comes from another grounded Twitch streamer. Her channel is linked down in the description. That is Master of None. And this is the Master of None Secret Technique Spy Drone Camera Mode. Yes, you can use the camera mode as a spy drone if you're wondering if there's a wolf spider creeping around the corner looking for you or you're too scared to jump off a ledge because you don't know what's down there. Well, you can engage the camera mode and send the free cam out like a spy drone to investigate before you go over there. It's a nice little tip. Number eight. I call this tip the trap timeout, and that tip is don't waste your time building traps right now. The spike strips and the traps are very weak. They have been nerfed significantly in Grounded Update 9.0, and as far as I know, 9.1 has not rebalanced the traps. The traps were a little OP before, but now they're straight up garbage, so don't bother building with them. Hopefully, in Grounded Update 0.10.0, .10 .0, the traps will be rebalanced so they're more usable or there's a more feasible way for them to be built because right now if you build them and they get destroyed by the bugs you will lose all the resources it, it's and 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 traps cost a lot especially those spike strips they cost a lot so for the amount of time and energy you have to put into building the spike strips the amount of time it's actually going to be of use to you is insignificant so don't bother building traps right now take a trap timeout Number seven. Look at how large this bubble has become. This is the bubble that was featured in my grounded mega bubble build base video. And as predicted, it became a relic. As you can see, the bubble grew to, to such a huge size. It's, it's bigger than even the foundations I laid around the bubble live on stream. It grew beyond those while I was streaming again. It was mind blowing, it was huge. And I ran past it and I took some photos. I thought this was really interesting and really neat. I decided to show them here. But if you want to find out what happened to this gigantic bubble, well, you just have to stay tuned until the rest of the video because I'm not going to go over it until the end. Instead, we're going to cover the next tip, which is actually a repeat from an earlier video. And that is only because I have seen streamers and I've heard other gamers complaining to me about it. But if you are using pallets to transport stems or grass planks around the backyard, you have to drop them. I recommend every 10 to 15 centimeters that you travel in the game, drop it. Pick it up, drop it. Pick it up, drop it. Because the moment an enemy gets aggressive at you, the moment a mite looks at you wrong, you will lose that pallet. And if you've been carrying it for hundreds of centimeters, 
it will return to wherever you originally picked it up from. So if you continuously drop the pallet and then pick it back up and then drop it again as you're moving, in case something like that happens, the pallet will stay relatively close to you so you don't have to go searching for it all the way across the backyard. This is a great idea. I've mentioned it before. I hope this helps you out. Number six. Just like with the shovel animation, after you have made contact with your weapon of choice, this really actually works better with the club weapons like the mint mace, the ant club, or the spiky sprig. But as soon as you make contact with the enemy, immediately block, and then you can start a second attack. Sometimes you can get four or even five hits in before the enemy even launches their first attack. And in many cases, that will ensure you victory against anything you're fighting. So this is a nice little technique. It takes a little bit to master exactly when you're gonna block. Sometimes you might block early and you won't even make the strike. So be careful of that. It's as soon as you see you've made contact with the enemy, engage that block. It'll save you a little bit of time in combat and that might just save your life. Number five. This is a little tip and trick that I picked up from another grounded YouTuber, Rudar. If you enjoy my content, you're probably going to enjoy his content. So go smash his like buttons and be sure to smash the subscribe button and ring his little bell. So you always be notified whenever he uploads a new video over on his channel. But what he showed me, not just me, he showed everyone live on his stream. He does a lot of live streams here on YouTube. He showed me that you can still use Daredevil to transport your pallets from the top of your bounce tower back down. Now, if you've been playing grounded, you might be using zip lines on a big bounce tower to transport stems and planks all around the backyard. If you're doing that, when they nerfed Daredevil, it became quite a challenge of how are you going to jump off of this tower and bring your pallet with you? Well, there is a way, and it, it, it still involves Daredevil, but it involves a few more steps now. Before you jump off your tower, make sure you equip Daredevil, first of all. Second of all, unequip all your gear because otherwise the gear will take damage from the fall and you don't want your gear breaking while you're trying to do this. Also, make sure you have ladybug armor, a full set of ladybug armor because you're going to need that because after you jump off the tower, the daredevil will keep you alive, but it will keep you alive with one HP. At that point, you re-equip your ladybug armor and your ladybug armor will start to heal you and by the time you refill your pallet and get back to the top of your bounce tower, you will have been completely healed, allowing you to repeat the process over, and voila, you can still do this secret technique of using your bounce towers and transporting the stems down your zip lines without needing to leave your pallets at the top. This is a secret technique that I learned, again, from Rudar. Go smash his like button. And if you enjoyed this video, you do me a huge favor, smash my like button. I really appreciate it. Number four. Now this one, this one will definitely be patched. This one will not be around for long, so take advantage of this tip and trick while you can, and that is you can equip damaged armor. Now, damaged armor in most cases isn't going to do much for you because it's going to break as soon as you get attacked the first time. But if you're using something like the aphid slippers for speed boosts, you can damage those. Those get damaged as you run in them, and once they break, they break and you can't wear them anymore unless you equip them onto an armor dummy and then fast swap your armor you will still be able to equip a damaged aphid slipper and as long as you don't get attacked those aphid slippers will function to give you a speed boost even if they're broken and they won't receive any more damage while you're running around so this is a way to make the aphid slippers basically last forever unless you get attacked while wearing them because as soon as you receive damage while wearing them they will break and this includes fall damage so be careful jumping off of stuff but yeah this is a neat little technique i hope it helps you out number three this one is real easy peasy and that is you can pull yourself out of the water with a ladder this is most effective really if you play a lot of grounded multiplayer because sometimes when you're a guest in someone's world the high ping will prevent you from being able to jump in and out of the water. If there's one of these ladders nearby, it's real easy peasy. Pull yourself right out of the water. Unfortunately, the build mechanics won't let us build the ladders down into the water. It would be real nice just for the aesthetics if it could poke down into the water just a little bit to make it look like a, a dock pier, a boating pier. That would be really cool. I think that would be really neat. If you think that would be really neat, you could let me know in the comments and I will give you a thumbs up on and say I agree with you I think it should go into the water even just a little bit so we can climb ladders out of the water and have it look nice at the same time number two 
This secret technique comes from another grounded YouTuber, DinoDut91. Link to his channel is down in the description. He has a video explaining this in greater detail, but I'm going to explain it real quick here, and that is you can climb the ladder really fast. You can climb the ladder really fast by jumping. You jump it, you grab it, you jump it, you grab it, you jump it, you grab it. The climbing animation isn't really the fastest on the ladder. It looks really nice, though. But if you really want to climb a ladder really fast, use this technique. Jump, grab, jump, grab, jump, grab. And depending on how long your ladder is, you might have to jump and grab a lot. It, it'll all depend on how, how, tall your, how tall your ladder is. If you got a tall ladder, you're going to be doing a lot of jumping and grabbing. If you got a short ladder, you probably, probably don't need to jump and grab. Anyway. Number one. Did you know that you can do slam dunks? You can do slam dunks in grounded using nothing more than a pebblet, a basketball hoop, and a bounce web. And you can dunk all over everything. It's also really fun to throw the pebblets at the bounce web and try to bounce them into the basketball hoop. It takes a lot of timing and patience and you gotta line it up, it's really complicated. But that's the final tip, that's the final trick. If you thought this final tip, which is really more of a trick, if you thought it was really cool, well you could do something really cool for me, I'd really appreciate it. If you would smash that like button, it would mean a lot to me. It really helped me out. And if you want to see more exciting grounded-related, grounded-themed content here on Tiny Power Gaming, well, I hope this video earned your subscription today. And if it did, don't forget to ring that little bell so you'll always be notified whenever I go and upload a new video here on Tiny Power Gaming. Also, if you ever want to come hang out with me live, I live stream over on Twitch. Links down in the description. And if you ever want to keep up with channel news, I got the Tiny Power Gaming Discord presented by Rambo Robbie. And I have the Tiny Power Gaming Twitter. Follow me over there to keep up with channel news. But before I get to the end of the video, let me discuss the conclusion of the Mega Bubble build. So the Mega Bubble build was in my world. It grew to a size I had never seen it grow to before. I was live on stream when this happened. I ran over to collect some blueberries and on my return trip past the soda can where the Mega Bubble build exists, there was some extreme lag. I didn't know what was happening. Was my stream crashing? Was the game crashing? Was my Xbox about to explode? No, 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 no. The bubble was about to burst. And the bubble bursted, and its explosion, or whatever happened to the bubble, caused so much rendering and texturing that my game became extremely laggy, and when the lagginess dissipated, the bubble was gone. So, you know, RIP, Mega Bubble Build. You are gone, but you will not be forgotten. If you enjoyed the video, thank you so much for watching, and until next time... Or maybe, watch your step. There be a tiny pirate here.